how's it going everyone so in yesterday's video we went over how to fix the cap and i put fix in quotations because all you're doing is making it applicable to be under the cap for 2023 and pushing a lot of money out into the future under yesterday's video basically we were trying to go all in yet again aaron Rodgers returns to the team they restructure as many deals as possible pushing money out keeping as many players as possible in order to potentially make another playoff run or another championship run with aaron Rodgers. in yesterday's video i also asked would you guys like to see what it would look like if they were to go into a rebuild so aaron Rodgers either retires or gets traded they go on with Jordan Love. They don't push all these contracts out. They get rid of some of these higher contracts in order to build for the future, a higher salary cap for the future to build around Jordan Love. And it seemed like a lot of people wanted to see that. So that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to look at the Green Bay Packers salary cap and rebuild it. So first and foremost, just like yesterday's video, going to quickly look over the current free agents, the Green Bay Packers, Adrian Amos, Dean Lowry, Mason Crosby, Mercedes Lewis, Al Lazard, Robert Tunyon, Jerron Reed, Randall Cobb, Donald Levitt, Rudy Ford, Eric Wilson, Josh Nyman, Corey Ballantyne, Keyshawn Nixon, Chris Barnes, Tyler Davis, and Justin Hollins. So obviously during a rebuild, you're going to want to cut ties with a lot of the older player contracts, the high cap hit contracts, and you're going to want to just eat the money right now as you can to get as much money as you can in the future when you start building around Jordan Love. And this is also under the pretense that Jordan Love, the Packers, would then accept his fifth-year option. And as we see here right on this chart, a fifth-year option for Jordan Love would be basic, and this is the uh, estimation of what it would be. Um, he wouldn't get a playtime fifth-year option or a one Pro Bowl or more than one Pro Bowls because obviously he didn't play and he didn't have any Pro Bowls. So he'd fall under the basic fifth-year option, which would be $19 million, 562000 against the cap. And that's for 20 2024 that's not for this upcoming season in 2023 for 2023 they actually have a very cheap quarterback in jordan love if they were to go that route he's 25 years old last year of his rookie deal at 3.9 million and even in 2024 with that 19 million dollar fifth year option he'd be right in the middle of the pack 16th overall in terms of average per year quarterbacks right below tom brady here and above baker mayfield at that 15 million mark all right so in terms of this scenario where we're going to be rebuilding there's going to be a lot of turnaround on this roster some of which you guys may not like like some players, you know, being cut and or traded that you might say, think, okay, that should not happen. But you know, when you're going into a rebuild phase, you're trying to get rid of all the heavier, heavier sided contracts with the older players. And there is a lot of them on this roster. As we saw yesterday, there was a lot of contracts to restructure due to the high cap hits that would then just push it into 2024 and 2025 then pretty much create an endless loop of restructuring and pushing money out into the future until you really don't have a good team anymore. And I know that's a lot of people's arguments. You know, how many times are you going to sit here and say we're going all in? They've done it the last three, four years per se, and they have no Super Bowl to show for. So I understand why a lot of people want to go this route. They want to start the rebuild. They want to start the next era of the Green Bay Packers. If that's Jordan Love, they want to find out. They want to see it sooner rather than later where Jordan Love is going to either A, request a trade, B, and his rookie deal go sign somewhere else because he never got a chance to play in Green Bay. I think a lot of people and I, myself included I can't sit here and lie and say I wouldn't be excited at the thought of seeing Jordan Love starting at quarterback what this offense would look like what Jordan Love could look like it's definitely intriguing but I also do believe Aaron Rodgers can still play at a high level and the Packers could still make a championship run so I'm kind of conflicted in that regard all right quickly running over all the big deals here for the current Green Bay Packers salary cap obviously we have Aaron Rodgers here his cap hit is 31 million the, the problem with Aaron Rodgers it gets harder and harder the longer you wait in terms of retirement or even trading this year it's a 31 million dollar cap hit and then of course when the bonus options are accepted obviously that number goes up in 2024 to 40 million in 2025 all the way up to 59 million and in 2026 53 million that's due to the void years that were added on the deal and i'm going to quickly go over this article from over the cap as well basically outlining exactly what they could do in both scenarios with aaron Rodgers if he were to retire or if he were to be traded so if he were to retire Rodgers would walk away and you'd forfeit all of his rights to the 59 million dollars in guaranteed salary for next year in order to best accommodate the hit on the salary cap my assumption is that the Packers and Rodgers would sign a new contract where the option bonus was eliminated and just 1.165 salary remained that would reduce Rodgers salary cap to 16.9 million and they could carry him on a roster as a procedural move until June 2nd at that point they'd put him on the retired list the salary cap charge in that case would be 15.8 million in 2023 and 24.4 million in 2024 if they did not do that and process the retirement right away they would take the salary cap hit of 40.3 million in 2023 but none in 20 
2024. So in this regard, if you're going through a rebuild, it might be a better approach to take that $40 million hit in 2023 because Jordan Love's cheap this year. You know, you're, you're, you're just going through a transition year pretty much and then try to get as much money as you can for 2024 and future years, which is what that would create. Now for a trade, it's pretty similar. Rodgers does not have a no trade clause in his contract, so he could be traded to a team as well. The timing of the option should give the Packers all the way until the end of training camp to move him. The cap charge here would depend on when he was traded. If Rodgers were to be traded prior to June 1st, the Packers would take on $40.3 million cap it in 2023. If you're traded after June 1st, it would be a $15.8 million in 2023 and a $24.4 million due in 2024. This assumes that the Packers did not exercise the option before the trade. If the option is exercised, then the trade number spikes to nearly $100 million. There should be no need to exercise the option until the last possible day. So pretty much we're looking under the same scenario for a retirement and a trade. If the Packers were to trade him pre-June pre 1st, if the option isn't exercised, $40 million on the cap this year clears up a lot of space into 2024 and the same for retirement. So in that case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to eat all his cap this year and create a lot more space next year. So Aaron Rodgers here, um, they don't have a retirement option on here. So I pretty much made a restructured deal in order to allow it to show a 40.313, 750 cap hit for 2023 and no cap hit for 2024. So we get a good picture of what it would look like this year and going into next year. I, they don't have a retirement option on here or else I would have done that. And then when you try to trade him uh, pre-June 1st, it, it, it takes into effect that you accepted the bonus on this site, which isn't realistic because then it would be a $98 million cap hit, which obviously is not going to happen. So we see Aaron Rodgers here. The Packers end up trading him or retiring. We could say it's a retirement here or it's a trade. Let's say they trade him. It's going to be a pre-June 1st. They're going to take that $40 million cap hit, get back whatever they get from another team, whatever that may be. It's not really the point of this video and move on from there. So under Aaron Rodgers being traded or retiring pre-June 1st, the Packers are now negative 24 million in the cap. So before we do any of the post-June 1st moves that I have scheduled in this video, we got to get under the cap because at the start of the new league year, you need to be under the cap. So we could sit here and say we want to do post-June 1st trades or cuts on certain players, but you're not going to be able to do that unless you're under the cap to that point. So let's first cut some players or trade some players pre-June 1st and get under the cap. First and foremost, we have Rasul Douglas. You're going to save 4.233 million if you cut him. Now, of course, you could trade him as well pre-June 1st. Obviously, you're not just going to straight up cut a player. You're going to make calls and see if another team would give you draft capital back in return for said player. So, of course, you know, if a trade is available, the Packers got to take it. And it's the same amount of money saved if they trade him pre-June 1st or cut him pre-June 1st. It's the same thing. So for Russell Douglas, I do think a team might trade for him. Uh, so we're going to do a trade pre-June 1st. And it sucks because I love Russell Douglas. I want him on this football team. But the Packers need to get under the salary cap if they're going to eat all of Aaron Rodgers' $40 million cap in 2023, giving them the most money in 2024. As we see here in 2024, that's $73 million, a lot of money in 2024. So we're going to do this for Russell Douglas, clear up a little bit of space for for 2023 get rid of Rasul Douglas the next player to save some money is Pat O'Donnell here 1.9 million dollar saved he's on the last year of his deal the Packers could go young at punter they could get an undrafted free agent they could even draft a guy in the seventh round thought he did well this year but again a little bit too much of a salary for a punter where you could just have an undrafted free agent guy there for a transition year so we're cutting Pat O'Donnell and just like yesterday's video to save a little bit more money Jonathan Garvin and Vernon Scott saving over a million dollars per cut there we're going to cut both of those guys as well the next player in order to get under the cap, this is a hard one. You're going to have to move Aaron Jones. And this is going to be a pre-June 1st designation because, as I said, we got to get under the cap. And he would save you $10.4 million doing this pre-June 1st. Now, if you were to do it um, post-June 1st, you'd save $16 million. But as I said, you got to get under the cap. And if you're taking all of Aaron Rodgers' cap hit this year, it's kind of hard to do that without making moves such as this to get under the cap before the start of the new league year. So Aaron Jones, I do believe you're getting a trade package for him. I, I, I do think a team would trade for him, although he's getting older in age, upwards of 29 years old. I do think a team would trade for him, something like a Buffalo team or something of that sort. So if we do a trade pre-June 1st, the Packers are going to save $10.4 million move on to A.J. Dillon as their number one running back, maybe draft a guy in the middle to late rounds in the next year's draft and go with that. I love Aaron Jones. I want him back in the building, but under a rebuild, his massive $20 million cap hit is simply just not going to work, and his massive contract for this year and next year in general is just not going to work. So the one restructure we're going to do since we still have negative $6.3 million in cap space is restructuring Jair Alexander. 
He's a pivotal piece of your defense. You build around him going into the future regardless. He's only 26 years old. So pushing some of that money out to the future isn't going to hurt you at all. Whereas Kenny Clark, 28 years old, if you were to restructure him, or David Bakhtiari, you're kind of pushing out money way too far for a, an older player and then putting yourself in a bad position. Whereas Jerry Alexander signed through 2026, so it's not as bad to restructure this deal. And like I said, the Packers need to get under the cap before the new league year. And since the Packers only need to clear $6.3 million, they don't even need to do a max restructure here. They could do $9.8 million of non-prorated bonuses, turn that into prorated bonuses, extend that out through his contract through 2026. And now the Packers are under the cap at $1.2 million. So now we can start to do the post-June 1st moves that we need to do. One of which is going to be David Bakhtiari. I mean, I think the Packers should retain him. I think he's one of the best left tackles in the league when he's on the field, but his contract is absolutely ridiculous, and it's not really a contract you're going to want to carry through a rebuilding team, especially for a 32-, 33-year-old lineman. I think you could definitely get a decent trade haul for David Bakhtiari, but as we see here, $28 million in 2023, cap hit, and, 20, and $33 million in 2024. So if you're rebuilding, you're not going to want a $33 million cap hit as an offensive lineman for your rebuilding team the next following year. So there's really no other option here, and now that we're under the cap, we can wait until June 1st, a post-June 1st designation. We're going to trade David Bakhtiari, hopefully get some draft capital back, then maybe draft someone like Peter Skaronsky out of Northwestern in the first round to get another tackle on your roster. But we'd save $17.2 million trading David Bakhtiari post-June 1st. So if we do that, then we're looking at $18 million cap space this year and a whopping $119 million in 2024. But that is more so like $100 million because we have to take into effect that the Packers would accept Jordan Love's fifth year option, which is at $19 million. So that would still drop, you know, you'd still have a ton of money. You'd have $100 million going into 2024. Another player that would be a trade post June 1st would be Preston Smith. I thought he had a solid year, but I think this is another deal where you look at it and you go, if you're a rebuilding team, you're not going to want a aging edge defender with 14, 15, 16 million dollar cap hits the next three years and a 13 million dollar one this year. It just simply doesn't really line up with your rebuild phase type of team. They can go younger at edge. They have Kingsley and Agbar they drafted. They could draft another guy early in, in next year's draft. And if they're trading all these guys and getting back a lot of draft capital, you know, they're going to have a lot more picks to draft younger guys. Would the Packers be able to trade all these guys or would they? Probably not. But under a rebuild phase, you want to get as much draft capital and clear up as much money for future years to build around your younger quarterback when they're not as expensive. So Preston Smith is going to be a trade post June 1st here. You're going to save $10.6 million. Now you're at $29 million in 2023 and $106 million in 2024 because, of course, like I said, you redact the Jordan Love fifth year option from this. The next move here is Darnell Savage. This doesn't have to be a post June 1st. This is just a trade in general. So in theory, they could do this also to get under the cap. But what team would take on Darnell Savage at a $7.9 million cap? Hit? It's a guy that's probably not even going to start on the defense. So what the Packers are likely going to have to do here, it's going to be, you know, they might have to give up draft capital and Darnell Savage in order for a team to take on his contract, take on Darnell Savage. So uh, whether or not that's the case or what it would cost for Darnell Savage to get shipped out, a cut wouldn't do the same thing. The Packers would still be on the line for the $7.9 million since it's fully guaranteed. The only way that would get off the books is if a team did trade for him. So let's just say the Packers find a, a trade partner. They give up whatever draft capital with Darnell Savage for a late round pick and they move on from Darnell Savage and the $7.9 million cap hit. And obviously that only affects 2023 as that's the only year he signed, raising the cap space up to $37 million. So now that you have some money for 2023 and then also into the future years, you're going to want to retain Rashawn Gary. Obviously under a rebuild, you're still going to want to extend Rashawn Gary, just like Jair Alexander, one of your best defenders. You're going to want to build around him. So I'm going to do the same deal. This is going to be laid out a little bit different from yesterday's video. Yesterday, I did a four-year $88 million contract for Rashawn Gary with a $25 million signing bonus, but I made it really backloaded where they're going to save the most money in 2023, where as you have space now, you don't need to do that. I'm still going to backload it a little bit because they have way more space in 2024, 2025, and 2026, whereas they have $37 million in 2023. So I'm not going to make this a minimum base salary, but $6.5 million, making his cap hit $12.75 million for 2023, $26 for 2024, $28.7 for 2025 
and 30.2 for 2026. So if we transact that, then we still have 35 million considering he was going to cost 10 million against the cap anyway. So that only, you know, drops by 2 million there. You get Rashawn Gary under extension. Your 2024 cap space drops to 100 million or 81 million based on the Jordan Love fifth year option. Then moving on to the free agents on the right side here. Don't think you're going to re-sign Alan Lazard going into a rebuild, a 28-year-old wide receiver, and it's a new quarterback in Jordan Love. He probably wouldn't want to stay on the team. He didn't seem like he wanted to stay on the team regardless, even if Aaron Rodgers comes back. So we're not going to retain Alan Lazard. Eric Wilson, we can give an, another uh, low two-year deal to for a special teamer. Josh Nyman, we're going to need to retain here. Uh, same as yesterday, a second round tender at $4.3 million. If you're trading David Bakhtiari, you're going to need another tackle. Zach Tom can play left tackle. Josh Nyman can play left tackle. But you're going to need another player to obviously play right tackle now. So Josh Nyman, Zach Tom can both be starting tackles. But that means you're going to need Josh Nyman. So we're going to tender Josh Nyman here at that $4.3 million cap hit there. And the Packers are still $31 million in cap space for 2023. Even though it's a transition year, you still want to protect Jordan Love. You don't want to get him hurt out there. So you got to have a decent line in front of him to allow him to progress and become a better quarterback. He's going to need a good line. The next free agent you're going to want to extend is Keyshawn Nixon. He's a young corner. You already cut Rasul Douglas or traded Rasul Douglas in this rebuild phase. So you're going to need another corner, a uh, more depth corner. And of course, as a returner as well, you're going to want to keep your, your special teams intact for a rebuild phase. He's a young corner, a young returner. You're going to give him the same deal as I did in the last video, a three-year, $14 million deal. But just like the Rashawn Gary, you don't need to backload it as much. You can put a little bit more base salary in 2023 and even it out more. So he's a cap hit of 4.1 in 2023, 4.6 in 2024, and 5.1 in 2025. So you go ahead and transact that. And you're still at $28 million in cap space in 2023 and $77 million effective in 2024. And actually, just to make this easier so we don't have to do the math up here, the cap space, I just extended Jordan Love, basically adding in that fifth year option in 2024 at 19.562 million. So now we can see without having to do the math in 2024, $76,698,885 in cap space. And doing this rebuild gives you a ton of space and opportunity to obviously sign free agents, younger guys that you could rebuild your team around. Obviously, you still have $28 million in cap space for this upcoming year. You could sign a couple guys. You have a lot of money in 2024 at 76 million. Even if you look at the 2024 free agent for wide receivers, you have guys like Mike Evans, Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd. Jerry, Judy, CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk. Now, a lot of those guys are going to get resigned to their current teams. But my point here is you're going to have a lot of money to play around with, and you're going to be able to sign some guys to build around Jordan Love. Not to mention all the draft capital you can end up with, trading some of these guys like Aaron Jones, Preston Smith, David Bakhtiari, and Rasul Douglas. You could be really loaded with a lot of draft capital for the next couple of years. And again, really build around someone like Jordan Love, or if Jordan Love is in it, use a trade package, trade up, and get a quarterback next year. And that's Another thing, if Jordan Love isn't it and he starts a quarterback this year and the Packers win four or five games, they're going to have another good pick in order to potentially draft another quarterback. So obviously this is the complete polar opposite of yesterday's video where they tried to retain every bit of talent on their team, pushing money out into the future, basically restarting the cycle for 2024 and they'll be in the same situation if they were to do that. Whereas this situation, you're, you're eating all of Aaron, Aaron Rodgers' contract right away. You're getting rid of the big contracts, eating all the dead money right away in 2023, which allows you to clear up a ton of space for future years and potentially build around someone like Jordan Love. I know a lot of people want the Packers to go this route. I see it on Twitter and in the comments a lot, but I also know a lot of people that want them to go all in one more year. But they're in a weird situation with the Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers contracts where you're not going to accept Jordan Love's fifth-year option if Aaron Rodgers returns this year. It's just a weird situation. And then does Jordan Love get angry? Does he try to say, okay, I don't want to play on this team. I want to get traded. He doesn't really have any leverage, but he could still do that. Then going into 2024 and signing for another team, then the Packers are in an even worse situation with no quarterback and less money. But that about does it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys a quick look on what this could look like if the Packers do go this route, if Aaron Rodgers requests a trade or they end up trading him or he even ends up retiring, what this could look like. Do I think it's going to go down exactly this way? Probably not. Do I think I think they trade all the players I traded here today. Probably not, but to maximize cap value and cap space, this is the route you should go. If you guys did like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you went down and clicked the like button. It supports my channel a ton. And also, if you're new here and want more Packers news analysis and updates such as videos like this every single day, go down, click the subscribe button. But I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, go back up.